Hello everyone, this is Joseph Lett from Stellarmate. In this video, we'll be tackling the Ecos Capture Modulo. The Ecos Capture Modulo is the primary modulo that we will be using for all our capture processes in Ecos. The GUI itself is composed of four major areas. The left side here, this is the planning or staging area. And this is where we put our settings before we capture an image or a sequence. The right side here is a sequence cube, and this is where we put our sequences and jobs because we can have multiple sequences. The left side here, the left bottom side here, this is the limit settings, and these are the conditions we want to be met for the sequence queue to keep going. If any of these sequences are violated, then the sequence queue will stop until they are met. Furthermore, there is also a setting for a meridian flip, which we'll be talking about in a few minutes. The right side here, uh, right bottom side here, is the progress bar. So this is the progress for the sequence and also for individual images. So let's just get right to it. On the top here, we select which CCD we want to use and also which filter wheel device we want to use as well. Here we do our temperature control, and then we have capture settings and file settings. For taking a simple preview, we're only considering capture settings, like exposure, which filter wheel, if any, we want to take, and which format, and of course the frame size and the binning, they're all set here. So now no, let's let's take a quick uh, preview. We'll set the filter to luminance, binning 4 by 4 We'll leave everything the same, and let's just click preview. And now it was changing the filter to luminance, capturing the image, and it should be downloading it pretty soon. So here we have our image. Okay. Well, how about we add a sequence of images? So what's really important to know here is that when, whenever we make any changes here, whether we select a different filter or we change an exposure or do any changes here, the changes are only applicable and executed if we take a preview or we add a sequence to the sequence queue. They're not immediately reflected. Okay, with that, so with that out of the way, let's create a simple RGP sequence. So let's say we want uh, exposure three seconds of five images. The first one is R. We'll leave the size and binning the same. And now let's go, we'll leave the temperature the same. So the temperature is now because we put the check mark here, it's always enforced. And here is how do we want to name our file. So the first thing we specify the directory. And here I specify the directory that I want to use. And here we want to put the prefix we want to use. So let's call it, for example, my image. Or let's say my sequence. Or we can even name it, let's see what star am I actually locked to? Zuzma. Okay, let's just use it. Let's use Zuz, for example. And here are some information we want to include also in the generated filter name. So all our images will have this as a prefix. And also we want to add the filter name to the file name and also the duration. Okay, so let's add this now as a sequence just click plus sign here and here we have the sequence added so now if you want to take uh, a green sequence simply just go to the filter select green keep all the settings the same and just add the add it again here let's do the same thing for blue and we're done you can save the sequence if you want and load it later, if you want to reuse it. 
Here you see this little person icon. This is to select the observer information. And so now I have I have myself defined here, but for your case in the first time you will not have it defined. So click the edit button and add your information here. And this information will be now embedded in all the captured PETS files. Uh, one small note here, here you see the format and the type. So the type is whether we want to take a light frame, bias, dark, etc. And the format here, we only have fits, but if you're using DSLR, you will have another format, which is CR2 or whatever format used by your DSLR camera. Now, let's say you add here, and let's say, for example, that um, for blue, you want to have the timestamp added. So how do you, what do you do? Do you just click timestamp? No, this is not going to work. Why? Because we said this is the planning area. So this is only applicable if we click plus. So how do we change the blue sequence then? So the way to do this is you need to go here and then just double click. So now you see that the, it says editing job three. So now the blue sequence is now active. And now you can, for example, select timestamp, for example, here. And then after you're done with your changes within the staging area, simply just click the check mark here. And now the jobs settings are applied. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and start the sequence. Let me just talk a bit about uh, uh, the limit settings here. So for the guiding deviations, this is how many arc seconds we want the guiding to be within before we abort our sequence. So if the guiding deviations exceed the, this threshold, then the sequence is aborted. But don't worry, it is automatically resumed as soon as the guiding deviation go below the threshold value. So instead of you manually discarding bad images, it will discard them for you. The second option here is autofocusing. So if you perform an autofocus operation, you will get some HFR value, which is the half flux radius. And here you can ask it to perform in sequence focusing. So after a number of frames, let's say, for example, it's by default after each frame, but you can actually go to options. And here you change after how many frames it performed the in sequence focusing. In here, so after five frames, let's put it to two frames so we can see what's going on here. So after after each two frames, the autofocus modulo will kick in and check if the autofocus value is within a, a specific threshold. Now it is zero, which means it will perform a complete autofocus operation the first time it's run. But say let's say for example the the HFR value was 1.5. So after two frames, the autofocus operation is going to take a single capture and check if the HFR is greater than 1.5. If it is greater than 1.5, then the autofocus process will perform a complete autofocus operation to bring the HFR value down. If it's within the threshold, then it will just, you know, go on its heavy business and continue the capture process. If you don't want to use the in-sequence focusing for whatever reason, then you can tell it to refocus every number of minutes. For example, here by default, it's every one hour. So every one hour, I run autofocus regardless of whatever other settings that are here. Finally, here we have the meridian flip setting. So in my case, I set it so that if the mount was tracking for more than 0.1 hours past the meridian, then command it to perform the meridian flip. And what's neat in Ecos is that it can perform a completely automated meridian flip, including resuming guiding, focusing, and alignment. Okay, so now really without further ado, Let's start the sequence. And actually, if, if I bring in the, uh, 
Dolphin here, which is the, the folder uh, of the file viewer in, uh, in KDE, we see that in the saved directory, it actually creates first light, there are subdirectory, and inside it, it will create R, which is the filter name. And inside it here, we can see the images. And actually, here we can see them as well, the fits viewer. And where is the, oh, OK. And here we see the images being captured with the correct name. So here we have the prefix. And then we have the frame type. We have R, which is the um, the filter name, and how many seconds we took it for three seconds. If we go up, you can see now the green, which is in progress, getting captured and getting saved to our desired location. So I hope this was a sufficient uh, and quick introduction to the Ecos Capture module. Of course, there are more advanced topics like, for example, rotator control, uh, custom properties, um, and other features in, within the Ecos Capture module. But this was a quick introduction to the workings of the Ecos Capture module. Uh, I hope you can find it useful to capture your images and uh, clear skies.